for the third Mayhem campaign diary. We had to skip a week, and then this session was started rather late, so it was actually a pretty short one, even though I'm only starting this recording at about 2 in the morning. Again, not a whole lot happened. I've started to get the idea that everyone is more of trying to figure out who their character is, and because of that they're not entirely sure what direction they want to go in, so I feel like it's that's to explain for the slower pace, uh, which I'm perfectly fine with. I don't mind a slower pace game, and everyone is still having fun, and that's what is important. This session, uh, they took their eight-day journey from Helmcrest to... Uh, the capital of New Dragon Mount. I kind of hand waved things going off at the end as far as uh, what was going on with Helmcrest, what kind of uh, decisions the 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 head of House Hart, no, not Hart, uh, whichever one it was. <laughs> I have to look at my notes again to see that of uh, what he was going to choose because I just didn't feel like they were too interested in that, so I didn't want to uh, take up too much time of what I knew was most likely going to be a short session in deciding that. I uh, let them kind of decide what they might be spending the the majority of the journey doing. Uh, the main, the most important part of it was that Azrael was kind of cozying up to Gideon and Darien as he had lived such a sheltered life. He didn't really know too much about other tieflings and he was just wanting to get to know them, which was, it was pretty nice and I think it's a good basis to go off on later. When they made it to New Dragon Mount, they made their way to a to another inn, the Armed Raccoon. This one was owned by a former adventurer, and to kind of spice things up a bit, I actually I looked up a old or a, a random list of just of of food for a D and D setting, and when they ordered, I had them roll a percentile die, and that is what they were served. The way I described it was that the owner of the inn didn't actually like take orders. It was more of that you'd just come in and be like, "Oh, I want something to eat," and he'd be like, "Well, here's what I think you should have." Uh, and they all seemed to like it, and I, they all got something different, so it was pretty entertaining. Tristan ended up getting fish that he was told they weren't entirely sure if it was actually fish, if it was just a wizard who never uh, polymorphed back, and then she just then gave it to Suri. <laughs> <laughs> who did eat it, because she didn't hear that description. That was pretty funny. Uh, Su Suri saw a man outside being thrown out of another building. Uh, she didn't know this at the time, but he was a Carsite. They are the the longtime descendants of, of the Archmage Carsis, and because of this they have... Uh, in, they're, basic, they're unable to use magic, and they have resistance to it. I actually didn't expect anyone to know what this was. Uh, I think uh, Mary ended up looking it up, and that gave her an idea of what it was. But at the time, they, they didn't know what it was. Uh, she just, uh, Suri went out to speak to him, uh, just briefly, when she didn't think he was very interesting, she went back in. But Tristan also followed her up, because he's very, he's still very protected of Suri, and just immediately did not like this man. His name was Arkin. And when, uh, when Tristan decided to sort of make a show of force, kind of push him up against a wall, and be like, hey, don't you get any funny ideas about her or whatnot. Arkin did not take that well. For my setting, I decided that the the, the car sites are treated similarly to, uh, like, half-orcs and tieflings and such, whereas you're just, you're not considered normal, so you're kind of shunned in society. And uh, so Arkin was quite used to this kind of treatment, and he doesn't really, uh, he doesn't take it well, I guess you could say. So he immediately drew his knife and kind of scratched Kristen on the cheek. I made a point of showing that, like, he could have got him deeper, but he was holding back, and Tristan was just like, oh no, I guess we're, we're fighting on guard! He <laughs> shouted, which was hilarious. This eventually ended in them... Uh, be being arrested and taken to prison, and the rest of the party had to go and bail them out. The entire time, Tristan was shouting in his cell, you could hear him throughout the entire prison, about uh, what an awful person Arkin was, and that he stole her ice cream and was trying to do untold things with, uh, with Tristan's dog, and <laughs> just making up all kinds of lies. It was actually pretty entertaining. And now Tristan has a deep hatred of Arkin, and I'm pretty sure Arkin probably hates Tristan as well. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, when they made it back to the inn after bailing them out, uh, Tristan was convinced to go to go to bed early with one of the barmaids, 
in order to avoid another fight that was quickly breaking out. And uh, the rest of the party got to know Arkin a little better, and he, he kind of told them about the car sites and how they were treated. And uh, at the same time, he also he was able to identify Azrael and Gideon as uh, magic users. I don't think he had them specifically as sorcerers, except Gideon, who I think he suspected was a wild magic sorcerer. He gave them some information on the Arcane Order of the North. The Arcane Order of the North... Uh, for, for the setting, they are kind of like the mage aristocracy, and they perform some very shady deals, basically like, or not deals, but like trials. They basically have like mage cockfights, in which you're forced to fight, fight someone to the death, or be imprisoned and then used against someone else for their test, and forced where they are forced to fight you to the death. It's very dark, really, and it's because of the, the position that many mages hold in society is one of the only reasons they're able to get away with it. But he, he told Gideon that uh, as a wild magic sorcerer, he actually had much more to worry about uh, because they are considered danger, danger to society and they're often hunted down. And if they're captured, then they're, they're shipped off to an island where they're supposed to live out the rest of their days in peace. But you still don't really want to do that. You know, you're still a prisoner. Uh, Gideon actually asked him if he was telling him this because he was about to do something stupid. Because uh, I, th I think that came after he told him that the car sites were often used to hunt down or even guard mages like that. And uh, Arkin told him that no, he wasn't interested and he doesn't really get along with any of those types of people. Uh, I don't know if they full if they were fully... If, if the player buy-in was entirely a thing there, or if they could tell that I was just kind of using the chance to give them a lore dump. Uh, but it was a good... It was a, he was the, the best character, I think, to deliver that type of information to them, and because it, it could be coming up. And Azrael actually ended up th thanking Arkin and, actually, and asked him if he knew of any... Uh, basically, of any magic relics or anything nearby that he could... Uh, that he could potentially be searching for to help strengthen the position of his of his family's house, because as a noble and as a tiefling noble at that, he does want to eventually not just rule his family's house, but rule from a position of strength. He doesn't want to be looked down on anymore. And Arkin likes all of them except for Tristan, and so he told him that he would get he would get a hold of his contacts and the, uh, through them he would see what he could find and he would try to help him out. And that is, that's the first bit of uh, player agency, I think, that I have to work with. I will probably set up uh, some kind of quest for them to go on after that. I actually have several things in mind that they could go looking for. It could be very interesting. After that, I, they, they awarded, or I awarded them their boon points, and they awarded them to each other. I gave them a level, so they're level 2 now. And that was the end of the session. As I said, it was a rather short game. There's not really a whole lot to say about it. Uh, hopefully we don't have to skip another a week and we can get right back into it next time. And hopefully I have enough time to prep whatever uh, job they decide to go on. That's all there is to say about that. It is 2.07 here. I'm going to go to bed. May all your 20s be natural and you have a good night.